Hey, how's it going? Today, let's um, get rid of this wall and move the engine back. I've been thinking about why this thing doesn't want to stay upright. And all the weight is here. From the fords of that cut there is all the weight, basically. Also, is the crane still... I better weigh it again. 4619. I was thinking, like, how much does a battery weigh? Battery is 800. So I need about six of these large batteries if I just wanted to use those as the crane's counterweight. <laughs> That's a lot of batteries. Um, but what I think really needs to happen is these pistons need to just come all the way back to here basically as far back as I can bring them so let's get rid of all these barrels I think what's going to happen with the roll stabilizer as well it's probably going to get quite bulked up in some specific places rather than being a huge tube that runs down here but I'm still going to leave that gap below because even if I don't run the stabilizer through it, which I likely I will anyway, I'll be able to use it as a fuel tank. So yeah, I think engines will come right back to here. So these weigh 300 each. I'm just gonna mark on the ground where this row is. And then I will place one piston and mirror it and copy it basically because it's just easier to copy these and that ensures all the placement is in all the port positions are the right orientation. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's gonna be a 12, 12 cylinder engine. Is that enough or do I do more? Do I go 14? Maybe I should do another one. And so we've got seven pistons, which means we've got a 0 0.14 offset, basically. So if we go zero, then minus 0 0.14, positive 0.14, and then minus 0.28, positive 0.28, then minus point, what is it, like, Four two, positive four two. And that should be all the offsets correct for that. And then just take all of these and put that on the other side. And I need a flywheel, probably just a, a two hundred. I've started thinking that these more in like their mass. So this is it's a one hundred weight flywheel, two hundred weight, and three hundred weight. So I've got to find a good spot for this. If I flatten out this section. Maybe again. I'll probably use two of them so it's actually 400 weight. And because these pistons are so large I might even have to go up to a higher weight. But I think just adding more of them makes a lot more sense. You could actually add them on the ends like that. I don't know, maybe I'll do that. I don't know. If I shuffled the whole engine down, let me get rid of this one. Um, I could mount them on the back like this. Because these are permanently attached, right? Oh, mm, it'd be really cool if they actually rotated. Because then you could just chuck them straight up on the top. And you would see them spinning around. Anyway, what have we got? Steam in. It should be steam in so we're going from right to left i'm gonna chuck this in the water now that all the weight from the engine has been moved uh it's probably still gonna roll but i don't know if it's gonna tip forwards okay i bet that crane weighs a lot more now as well so if i put in like maybe seven of these big batteries along the edge and if I connect the electricity 
that will at least stop the crane from rotating and that will stop it it'll stop the crane from having any kind of influence for um twisting and tipping the ship over if all these are just locked out <laughs> that's awesome so yeah the engines were contributing a lot to it tipping forwards man i thought i was gonna have a real rough time trying to figure that out that's actually this is like stable enough that a roll stabilizer would be able to correct it from small waves um we're obviously still oh no i put this in here wait this doesn't work it's fine that's fine i was trying to figure out how i could still let it rock by using this as a stabilizer but the pivot was too weak and it was just flipping over anyway so we can probably disregard that completely please don't roll <laughs> yes yes oh it's sort of going though isn't it which just means i think the weight from the crane needs to be increased and if you think i before the crane was a little bit different uh, <laughs> but i can't just keep adding batteries uh, this also means oh is there a hole no this also means this floor can come back even more which uh, is going to mean more weight in the ship overall, but maybe I should have more pistons. <laughs> if I have more pistons, I get more weight and I also get more power output. What if I run, run them in different sets or run them separately? This will let me double up all my um, steam equipment, so adding more weight. Right, so what have we got? The RPS output is at the top. The steam boiler needs pipes on both ends. So I should place this. Realistically, I should place all the steam stuff at the back because the back needs to come down the most. So this is probably like eight blocks long. I'm going to bring a floor through here, through the middle. This is going to be my walkway. And then I'm going to start piling up all the equipment on top of this thing. And I do need another slot. No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay, I can do this. So I can have... Hmm. Do I want to put anything inside of this? This might be a good space for a tank of some kind. So let's leave it hollow for now. But the main thing is that I want to put the boiler on it. Got steam out, so I need to flip these around. Oh. And I want a bunch of condensers and I want to push them as far away from the boiler as possible so that looks like they're just going to end up they're just going to end up along the back here how much do condensers weigh 250 and a boiler weighs 500 but i'm going to have a lot of condensers i want to try one diesel furnace but i need electric furnaces as well also if i can get all the furnace stuff at the very back of the ship then it's not going to be as annoying so we're not going to have to listen to it as much and i think the fluid jet system i've got in here i'm going to change quite a bit i need a, a ballast at the back right to fill up and drain out when when i need the when i when i when i when i when i've loaded something heavy on the back i need to be able to drain out water and when it's not anything on the back it needs to suck water up and so I'm basically creating like a false floor or no, I'm creating a tank. 
and putting the floor on top of the tank. This is my ballast tank. It's not very big though, is it? How much, how much fluid can I really get into that? And I should probably bring it forwards quite a bit. This is going to take forever to fill up. So at the top of this, I can put my fluid jets. Then somewhere in the middle, have the diesel furnace. And I'm really hoping I can get away with just using one diesel furnace to heat everything. And then that will have an electric furnace behind it. Which uh, I don't actually know how the electric furnace holds up in terms of like how much it can heat. So I may need to put multiple units in. That's going to be my furnace. So wherever I put the furnace, I should put the boilers because you want the boilers to heat up. And if it can be just heated additionally with ambient heat from the furnace, that would be good. And you don't need to see the boilers. But you probably want to see pipes. So we've got like coolant in, coolant out, right? If I use two boilers, then I need to run the pipes back. You would need to come in like this. Then back into each other and Boilers don't care which way the coolant comes in and out, so it's going out this bottom pipe into boiler 1, then it's running back along into boiler 2, and then back into the furnace. I don't know if that's going to work, and I've only had to use these small pumps before for coolant. If I use the big pumps, then I might be able to push it a bit quicker, but these small ones also fit in line a lot better. Something like that. Hopefully that works. Hopefully. And then we have water in, which makes sense because then I can put a header tank up top. Oh yeah, you need a, right now you need um, like a header tank to fill up the coolant loop. You don't need a tank to fill up the fluid in the boiler right now. These pipes here, exhaust and air. That's pretty simple. The healer tank you also want have to have access to a desalinator. I don't think um, I need to even look at the boilers, right? Maybe if I do like a hatch. So that if you need to weld it, you can just open that and then you'll be able to see the body and weld it from there. What does thou think? Wait, where is this floor? Uh, what have I done? What am I doing? Uh, if I push this stuff down low, that's better for center of mass, though. Uh, I'm going to keep doing it here. I can move it if I have to. So this is like the heat producing area. And I want the condensers to be somewhere else. Condensers should be at the other end anyway, because what's going to happen is... We've got water in at the top, steam out on the bottom. We want to be pumping the steam into the pistons, which I think on this side they're yeah, the other way. I was going to use this all as one system, so it makes sense if it was like steam in here, steam out, then onto the other side, steam in and steam out, so it flows through. But if it's just a mirrored system, you don't want that. I need a good place to put the pumps. I mean, that's that's as good a place as any. And then we run pipes all the way down. Got to make sure they're all connected. Steam in, and all of this side here needs to get flipped. And then we need steam out, which maybe I can use a similar pump at this end. Hmm, I didn't actually think about this. Usually I've been running 
where it's like hot on one side, cool on the other side. But now I'm going like this way and then there's no real reason I can't go back the other way. Like I can't, there's nothing stopping me from putting condensers over here. I wonder if I put the condensers in the water tank. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Let me just cut this whole thing, pump and pipes, and flip this. Flip. Okay, and now I can use as many condensers as I want. So what's this? Water out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now on this side, I'm thinking I can just run the condensers down the sides of the pistons. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. I wonder if I give every piston its own condenser. What does that do? You want to pump steam out. Oh boy. Boy, oh boy. So condensers don't care. Um, there is no fluid in or fluid out. It's just coolant A and coolant B. And I'm using the C as my radiator. And then I think what I want to do is pump them all into one line. Hmm, figure out that pump placement in a minute. Oh, yikes. Oi, oi, oi. Oi, 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 oi. So the condenser needs to go up then so that it can face, so it can be like lengthways. Because its hitbox is longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I like the idea of the pumps in the floor. I'm going to try and stick with that. Um, I could just go. No, I can't just go. If I lift the whole condenser up, then I can put the pumps directly on the ports. Get rid of some pipes. That would be the most efficient way to pump the coolant. And then the pump needs to go up. Boop. And I'll probably make a little, little stand for the pump. Like that. Like that. It looks a bit goofy. Mm. It'd be good if there was a way to make it look like the condenser was more secure and wasn't just like standing on the pumps. Oh, that'll do for now. So I'll grab all of this, including the fluid ports. From the pipes, the pump, the condenser, and then we just go boop. Replace everything as we go. Because every time I've made steam before, I've just used one condenser. I don't know if this is going to be good or not. This could end badly actually because it might take a lot of steam to fill up the condenser before it turns back into water. And if I'm splitting it up then maybe there's not enough steam. But the other thing is that I am potentially, um, potentially I'm keeping the temperature of the condensers much lower because there's going to be less hot steam going into them. That's my theory. That's what I'm working with here. And now if I use a pump and force all the water back through, this is a lot of pumps. <laughs> oh man, this is so dull. <laughs> and then that just goes back up. Actually, yeah, that could just go up from here. It needs to go up into the roof somehow. Not that far up. So this is, is this two steam engines or one steam engine? Because the pistons are separate. They are receiving separate steam and returning separate water. We'll add another pump up here, force it back into the boiler. Um, and I guess I'm gonna use the roof here. Rather than putting the pipes in the deck, we'll try and 
use this uh, block that's coming down as some kind of pattern. So yeah, I need to get liquid from this tank into the coolant system. I'm going to use a T and two flow valves and then T out from the tank. Change it to fresh water. These all need to get routed better, but for now, I'm just going to use fluid ports. Need a variable valve. And then make sure on your diesel furnace air intake, especially if you're making a boat, put a little T or something and then chuck an air manifold on it. Like that. And that will stop any water from stopping the furnace. So all the water that comes in here will be deleted by the air manifold and any air that comes in here will be fed into the furnace. Oh, actually, I think that's it. Uh, other than a fuel tank. So, uh, where to put a fuel tank? When it's all put together properly, the fuel tank will be down in the floor somewhere. But for this, just so I can test it, I'm just going to put the tank there. And there's no flywheel attached to this, but it should work. The flywheel helps to maintain everything, so I probably should add it. We'll check a large generator on here for now and see if it's making good power. I'm gonna copy this. Chuck it on the other side. I'm currently making a tutorial for how to do a steam engine, and I think this. Pretty sure this is the um, test ECU I was setting up. Maybe I didn't save it. Hold on, let me go find the thing. I think this is a. You need a really small microcontroller. Um, I'm just going to put a constant on for my key signal. There is no fuel valve. We have a furnace ignition, furnace diesel level, which doesn't matter. Furnace temperature, air valve, and then fuel valve, which doesn't matter. And then the constant on needs to go to all these pumps. So many pumps. Oof, you don't need this many pumps. Like realistically on a steam engine, you probably want a pump every time you exit, like in between every um, piece of equipment. So when you exit a steam piston or a turbine, and you enter a condenser, you would want a pump to push the, the fluid through. But there's just so many connections on this that there's a lot of different pumps. So if I spawn this in, it should start. Is it going to roll over though? I'm going to need to get that thing again, this little stabilizer wheel. Because I need this to be sitting in the water. Uh, what's happening? Temperature's going up. Mm, oh, I didn't connect anything. Damn it. I'm having a real bad day today. No electricity, so no coolant. The constant on's not connected, so no pumps. Let's check that. That's fresh water, that's fresh water, that's fresh water. Okay. What have we got? What have we got? High temperature. Yes, 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 yes. Boiler temperature is coming up. Uh, 59, and it looks to be the same on both of them. So we're definitely getting a split. 
if these can't get up to like 120 then I will have to increase the temperature of the furnace they look like they're slowing down a lot um, we've taken a bit of fresh water out of all of the tanks these are like 720 litre tanks I think it might be worth increasing the, the idle temp of the furnace instead of 130 maybe like 150 now see the fluid volume isn't stabilizing it's got fluid from that tank that could run into it but it's all turning into steam and I don't know if that's a problem but it could be a problem if there's no fluid in it at all the pistons probably move whoa holy shit. what so we're at like 0.4 pressure 0.5 pressure we are there's like no steam in this six steam and no fluid well there's there's still a lot of fluid actually what the hell what look how fast it's going what on earth so the pressure will fall off here yep because we've got no steam now we've got no steam we've got no liquid we've got no fluid there's no water in that at all so the water is not in the condenser Where is, where is everything? It won't be in here because... Hold on, what's going on? This isn't even connected. That one, that's not connected. Damn it. I'm so dumb, look at this. Look at this. okay okay everybody calm down generally these pistons don't rotate that quickly like the kind of rps you'll get on pistons is like 0.5 those look like they were going crazy fast and they're on a they've got a flywheel connected and they're directly no no no, no they're not connected to anything Damn it. Damn it. I need to watch my own tutorial about this. These clutches need to be engaged. Final test. I'm pretty sure I've remembered everything now. Furnaces at temperature. The boilers are coming along. Okay, so the fluid volume is not filling up. Fresh water. But fresh water is going out. Holy crap. Um, so we must be turning the water into steam faster than it can fill up the tank again. But you see the fluid volume's not really like draining out too much. There might be a number where we have to like figure out exactly how much water to put into the system. But we're going. We are going very slowly so what's the output 6,000 but 6,000 times 2 because these are totally separate engines so we're doing 12,000 it's nearly 7,000 so we're more close to like 14,000 whatever 14,000 output is but that's crazy that's so much well to be fair though if you if you're getting like nearly seven thousand out of seven of these big pistons, you can get about four thousand output out of five medium pistons. So it kind of scales up a bit funny. These condensers, there's just like no steam in any of them. Where is all the steam? Where is all the steam? There is steam in the boiler. There is fluid in the boiler. So this is working probably need to put a relief valve on the other end of the tanks I don't think this tank is changing no just these ones that fill up the boiler I'm pretty sure they would need a or they would perform better with a gas relief valve oh yeah job done job done we have an engine we have a pretty crap engine but an engine okay fluid jet time I kind of feel like I don't want you to be able to see the fluid jets at all 
I just want to put some fluid jets on here to see if it works at all. So that will be water in, water can go up. Then I'm going to use clutches to I'm going to use clutches to separate the water from the power. I'm going to run a pipe sideways here and then yeah, splice those together. Get rid of these, get rid of that. And then connect these two together as well. So as long as all the power outputs are connected together, it's fine. And they need to be connected before they go into a flywheel. So we'll come straight back. Realize there is a valve in the way. <laughs> oh man, I'm just butchering this now. Come back to here, gear it up, which uh, we'll do through here. One, two, three, four, five, six. My clutch, flywheel. Another clutch, pipe. And then we need to grab that constant one. Put that on the clutches and then we connect the fluid jet number one a and d deflect a bop, 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 bop. deflect b bop, 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 bop. then connect one of these clutches to w and s this is where my throttle is going today we have throttle down, throttle up, WS, and output. WS to 100% reset. This should work. Maiden voyage, here we go. Okay, it's working, I can hear it working. This has got to be the longest amount of time I've ever spent working on one vehicle. It's been like more than a week straight. Do you think it's going to work? We have it 10.1 throttle. I'm pretty sure I put it in reverse. Steer away, steer away. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's, I saw a particle effect. We must be going. We're at 130. We're making steam. The pistons are going. It's actually not bad running up and down between all the floors. <laughs> ah, we're doing it. What happens if I try to turn? Oh my god. Oh, I didn't secure the crane. This is insanity. Okay, so then go forwards. Okay, this doesn't need to be very fast, and I don't think it's going to be very fast. <laughs> this is cool. It's actually really weird because in the bridge, it's just totally silent, and it's because I'm using fluid jets and all the pumps are so far away. There's no chance of hearing any of that sound. I feel like I need to put some kind of artificial noises up here. Because otherwise it just feels like it's some weird magic boat. I should have put a speed sensor in it. Figure out how fast it's going. Let's give it a little bit of wind. Was that any wind? What happened? 20% nothing. Doesn't care. 50%? I mean, because of the stabilizer wheel thing. That thing there that thing it's yeah, it's not gonna jump up and down or anything oh look at that it just looks cool being out at sea on its own now it'd be really cool if you could play the game with these filters on 
Wait, I want to. I really want to play with this filter on. If, it, if there's, if someone knows a way where I can make the everything like green, the ocean green, give everything a weird green tint, let me know because that'd be sick. It makes it seem real magic, real mystical. If they wanted, to, like, this would be a good game mode if if you wanted to play a game mode where the Meg and the Kraken and heaps of other like magical beasts exist. Turn the ocean green, put weird stuff in the ocean, weird sea monsters, and just play it like this. This looks so much better than normal. I'm so happy with this. This is not my usual kind of ship. I don't really, this is probably the first big ship that's really ever gone anywhere. Should I just leave it? Uh, let me turn the wind down. Oh, is it still going? Oh, it's just so slow. Let's go check the engine. Um, it does seem like it's maybe stopped. Yeah, something, something's happened. Temperature is fine on the furnace. We have a lot of steam in the boiler. And no fluid in the condensers. No steam in the pistons. And are these tanks? They are essentially empty. So to check out see look how low the temperature is on all these because we're not dumping steam into all of them like steam from all of the pistons isn't going into one condenser it's keeping the temperature way lower so much lower usually i see these running at like 60 70 degrees nine degrees is insane but i have misplaced all my steam somewhere that pump's not moving any fluid anymore. It could be that there's no pressure in these tank, or that there's a... It's not a negative pressure, so it shouldn't be a vacuum trying to pull anything back in. It's weird, isn't it? It's like we can't create any more fluid for the boiler. It all just gets turned into steam. I wonder if I need more tanks. And we'll put a gas relief valve on there. Port, port end, change it to fresh water, fresh water, fresh water. So that's like, these are like 700 and something litre tanks and I've got two of them. I'm not sure if there's just something broken with steam still or, yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand. It's just like, the steam is just disappearing somewhere. I might be able to go faster if I use propellers not sure on that one let's go and have a look and see if there's more or less steam in here i think i'm gonna have to run it for a while actually because we need to find out if both of these tanks up here are going to drain completely and then like the ideally what i would want is the fluid volume in each boiler to remain at like 100 or 50 or some kind of constant value so like half of it is fluid and half of it is steam or well, half of it is water and half of it is steam see this is crazy right the fluid in and the fluid out are just nothing but i'm seeing changes in atmospheric pressure so the fluid in pressure is going up and up and up which means it's the side with the steam on it so steam must be gathering in here because it's not is this pump just not working what is going on there's no fluid in there's no fluid out here we've got no steam in and no water out maybe i connected all the condensers up backwards let's leave this guy running for a second and head back to make sure because if, if those condensers are all back to front then that would be screwing with it water out god damn i'm a dummy 
this is potentially going to work a lot better because the steam will actually be condensed and will actually return into the boiler. So I'm going to go and try and catch the other boat. Uh, where'd he go? Oh, he's out there somewhere. I might go check what the boilers are doing. They might be behaving differently now that there is like water coming back into them. This looks like it's a lot more particle effects. Also, this is terrible. Imagine if you're in the engine room trying to do something going in reverse. You just can't see anything. I feel like they will remove the particle effects from fluid jets because other people have complained for different reasons. And that is just insane. Full speed ahead. Oh man, you can't see anything. <laughs> you really have to hop down from your seat to be able to look further ahead. Where is he? Oh, there he is. That might have just been unloaded. Where is that on the map? If I see a waypoint and then look at it, yeah. So vehicles unload after two kilometers that's why I couldn't see it before and that is why a lot of things like missiles and radars and stuff are kind of useless unless you're going to put keep active blocks on everything I wonder if I can catch him if this one's even faster it doesn't look faster maybe it feels a little bit faster oh he might have actually stopped um, if the engines ran out of water and couldn't make any more steam. The roof feels really low for some reason. I think it's just on all the floors that are like quite big. The ceiling feels very low down. I feel like maybe in a big ship you want your ceiling to be nine blocks higher rather than eight. <laughs> I need to pause this. Oh man, it's a fleet. It's a fleet of them. Everything's coming together. So I'm just double checking. I don't have infinite electricity or infinite fuel on. I don't have vehicle damage on, which might do something to do. Like there could be something in the system that maybe overspins itself or heats up too much. But I think I've got the engine sorted. It just needs a better layout, but two boilers, one furnace. I still need to figure out how to put an electric furnace into here, which shouldn't be hard. It should just be two valves that disconnect the coolant from the furnace and reroute into coolant on the electric furnace. And then we should, we need to find out how much electricity I can make. <laughs> should I put hard points on the back so you can connect two of them together and make a mega boat? If you want to transfer some cargo. Easy. Easy peasy. Let's chuck a speed sensor on here and see how fast it's going. Uh, I'll output all the speeds so we know all of them. This is probably max speed already. 50 k's, 34 miles and 29 knots. Is that fast? Not fast enough? I'm not sure if adding more gearboxes to that will make it go faster or if just changing over to props can give it a higher speed. And does this even need to go faster than 34 knots? 29, 34 miles. Does this need to go faster than 29 knots? The rib can do like 40 on a good day. I think this is okay. This is the kind of ship where you would just say, click on the map and drive over to there. And you would just leave it. You would just say, yep, boop, drive, see ya, and go and do your things. So it's good to know that the engine works and that this is a viable way to do the engine, split in two from one furnace. That's all I've got today. I'll do some cleanup of the engine room and I can start working on the cargo hold. Was there like three other floors I need to figure out how to do? 
I don't know, leave me suggestions of what I should put inside the boat because I don't really know what I'm going to put on the inside other than some cardboard boxes in the cargo hold. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later.